Chapter 21, A Dream, Reality. The child subconsciously raised her hand to squeeze her thin cheeks. It's not painful, so I must be dreaming, ha ha. No wonder she could see a mountain of gems and gold that reached nearly 20 feet in height as soon as she looked up. Her feet were currently stepping on the red, blue, and green gems, whose sparkle nearly blinded people, which was also why the bottom of her feet was somewhat pained when walking. Our dear Kiao Mu subconsciously moved her big toes, which were curled up. How come I can move my toes? She pursed her mouth and squeezed her arm again. There really wasn't any pain. Yes. She must be dreaming. Thinking about this, she could not help but chuckle. It appeared that she thought about this so much during the day that it appeared in her dreams. She had been thinking about how to obtain a sum of money and stock up on supplies before the zombie outbreak, and now, at night, she dreamed of a rich mountain brimming with jewels and gold. Ha ha ha, this is simply too hilarious, isn't it? The child supported her head with her chin and knelt down cheerfully looking left and right. This place truly was not too big, merely covering 15 cubic meters, similar to a square box. The four sides and the sky were covered by a giant purple screen. Purple screen? Something's not right. Why am I finding it more and more familiar as I look at it? The child moved her shifting eyes and settled her sight on the pair of human stone statues that were about three stories high and located next to the jeweled mountain. The pair of stone statues were at about the same level as the jeweled mountain, and she could not see the faces, However, for some unknown reason, Kiaomu found it ineffably familiar, and feelings of fondness and dependence rose from her heart. She picked up an emerald from the ground and mindlessly caressed it in her palm. Her head turned from east to west before suddenly hopping two steps forward, and her hand sifted through the piles of gems before digging out an exquisitely carved food box made from red sandalwood. Hee <laughs> hee. Kiao Mu almost could not resist laughing out loud. This dream was simply too comical, wasn't it? Not only did she see gems and gold and silver, but she also saw a food box. She opened the lid of the box, and ha ha. As expected, there were two rows of ten white, plump, and adorable meat buns. There were also a few lollipops sticking up from the gaps between the meat buns. Just how much of a money grubber and foodie was she that she would dream about hugging gold and silver mountains and being able to dig out a box packed with meat buns and lollipops from said gold mountain? Ha! Huh. Kiao Mu guffawed. Suddenly, Kiao Mu could feel her body being shaken and dazedly pulled open her misty eyes. She looked at the two large and small faces a hair's breadth away with confusion on her face. Sister, what kind of good dreams are you having? You just said, ha ha ha. I saw meat buns. Kiao Lin's head leaned back and extended two chubby little fingers out, pointing towards the sky. And then she opened her meaty little hands and demonstrated Kiao Mu's dreaming appearance. PFT Wise Ikin could not resist snickering. She picked up her round younger daughter with one hand, and with her other hand, she pulled Kiao Mu up by the hand. Kiao Kiao had a pleasant dream, right? Come on, we have to wake up. Mother will go and prepare breakfast. Kiao Kiao, bring Xiao Lin to wash up, all right? After saying this, Wise Ikin stood up and left the room, leaving behind the chubby Kiaolin who was enthusiastically shaking her hand, wanting to pull her down from the bed. Sister, hold on. Kiao Mu sat in a lotus position on the bed, completely unmoving. She closed her eyes and slowed her breathing down before shutting off her five senses and guiding a small and weak current of mystic energy to slowly stream through her freshly triggered mystic meridian. This thread of mystic meridian was extremely tiny and faint, so weak that it could be overlooked in all the tendons and muscles within her body. However, this was a necessary path to beginning the journey of a mystic cultivator. Many people went no farther than opening up their mystic meridians and they never stepped over the threshold to become a mystic cultivator. Kiao Mu held her breath and concentrated, twisting this weak current of mystic energy together. It then charged to the spot between her eyebrows, forming a thin strand of mystic conscious. Chapter 22, In a World Kiao Mu grew excited. She did not expect to be able to immediately meld the mystic energy into her globular and transform it into mystic conscious. In her previous life, 
she remembered that she had spent an entire seven days without sleep or rest before she finally condensed her mystic energy into mystic conscious. The teacher who coached her even said that she was quite talented already and condensed mystic conscious at least three times faster than normal people. Only people who could condense mystic conscious were considered to have truly stepped into the ranks of mystic cultivators, and these people could use their mystic conscious to open the door to their own inner world. Otherwise, if a mystic cultivator could not even open their own inner world, then they would become a laughing stock. The moment that Kiyamu's mystic conscious generated, all of the excessive mystic energy gathered together and receded into the mystic domain in the center of her lower abdomen. The mystic domain that she currently possessed was merely the size of an olive pit, so the amount of mystic energy that it could store was naturally pitifully minute. Kiao Mu inwardly estimated that her current cultivation was similar to that of a level 3 mystic cultivator. However, at her current age, being a level 3 mystic cultivator was definitely a jaw-dropping existence already. In her past life, the vital importance of mystic conscious had been recognized in the later stages of the battle. Many great mystic cultivators who had already progressed to level 10 had later delved their energy into researching how to strengthen their mystic conscious and expand their inner world. Mystic conscious itself was condensed from mystic energy, therefore, if a person had 10% mystic energy, then the mystic conscious that they could initially condense would not surpass 1%, so their inner world was naturally pitifully tiny. However, later, through research, it was discovered that mystic conscious could gradually advance after endless training and strengthening. If there were two level 3 mystic cultivators, and one of them had mystic conscious that could reach 3% of his mystic energy, then he would certainly be a lot more powerful than the person with 1% mystic conscious. Whether it was the speed or strength of their mystic energy in battle, it was like night and day between them. Currently, Kiyamu could clearly see the tiny thread of mystic conscious that condensed in her mind gradually transforming into a pair of small and frail hands that forcefully pushed open a large door enveloped in a white fog. Then, the pair of hands turned into a barefooted little person, and step, 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 he sauntered through the door with great familiarity. Kiyamu's eyes flashed when she carefully examined the back silhouette of the little person. Fook me. Wasn't this an apparition of my mystic conscious? Hold on, an apparition of her mystic conscious. How could the apparition of her mystic conscious appear now? She remembered that in her previous life, it took her nearly ten years of cultivation before she finally successfully condensed an apparition that fancy because after her mystic conscious materialized into an apparition, then it could cultivate on its own inside the knowledge pool all the time. It was much simpler compared to how the common people exhausted a colossal amount of energy to ceaselessly use all sorts of training methods in order to condense their mystic energy and strengthen and mold their mystic conscious. A person who obtained an apparition of their mystic conscious was similar to possessing a gold mountain and a group of strong, free labor, merely having to wait for the gold coins to drop into their pockets one by one without needing to even count them. He he, wait. Maybe she hadn't woken up from her dream yet. Eh? Why does the box-like sealed space that the apparition ambled into look so familiar? Wasn't this the scene of the gold mountain littered with gems that she dreamed about earlier? No wonder it looked more familiar the more she looked at it. Wasn't this the inner world that she had once acquired in her previous life? The purple crystal screens that dominated the sides and top of the box were basically the walls of the inner world and formed a world. This was her inner world. Kiyamu opened her eyes and foolishly sat on the bed for a moment, forgetting to utter a single sound. Why did the inner world that she newly opened have a mountain of gems and gold? And there was even a food container filled with that many meat buns buried underneath the treasure mountain? She remembered that when she first entered the inner world in her past life, that place was half its current size, and besides the walls, she literally had four bare walls for a home and possessed nothing. Chapter 23, Provocation No matter how she thought about it, Kiyamu could not understand why her inner world, which was supposed to be completely empty, had so much gold and silver and gems and jade stored inside it. Kiyamu attempted to move a gold brick from her inner world, and a tiny stab of pain appeared in her head causing her to instantly close her eyes. When she reopened them, the faint thread of mystic conscious had already retreated from her inner world, and the door to her inner world had naturally closed as well. Furthermore, 
the apparition had also probably been locked inside the inner world, so she could do nothing but leave it alone. Kiyamu lightly sighed. Her mystic energy was very weak, so it naturally could not condense mystic conscious for too long. This meant that she had a treasure mountain for nothing and could not withdraw things from there. After thinking about it, she attempted to move the little square wooden table from the corner of the room into her inner world and promptly rolled her eyes. What use was it if she could only store but could not withdraw? The stoic, woodcut-like face suddenly made a sweet and adorable expression. If Crown Prince Lian had witnessed it, he would have certainly exclaimed, interesting. In truth, it was not that Kiyamu did not understand the logic that storing things inside the inner world exhausted an extremely tiny amount of mystic conscious, unless it was mass storing. In this case, the amount of mystic conscious required was an entirely different matter. If it was merely storing one or two items, then the mystic conscious that was consumed was essentially negligible. On the other hand, Withdrawing items from the inner world required the consumption of quite a bit of mystic conscious. It was not based on the item's value, but the larger and the heavier the item, the more mystic conscious that was consumed. If there was an insufficient amount of mystic conscious available, then the inner world's door would naturally close, and, in theory, you would be unable to withdraw items from it. Although the size of that gold brick just now was not too big, it was quite heavy so it was unable to be taken out with her current mystic conscious. Kiyamu did not forcibly try any more and planned to rest for a while before trying to see if she could withdraw something at night. Sister, the table, the table. Little Kiyaolin childishly called, her chubby finger directly pointing at the corner of the room. The small wooden table had vanished all of a sudden in front of her just now. Kiyamu ignored the little guy and tugged on her hand. Then, the sisters casually washed up before leaving the room. As soon as they walked outside, they saw second uncle, Kie Aozongxing, sitting at the dining table near the entrance of the courtyard. He waved at them with a grin. Kie Ao Kiao, Xiao Lina, come and eat some kanji. Kie Ao Mu was expressionless on the outside, but inside, she did a little happy dance, thinking about how she needed to find a way to converse with second uncle one on one later. However, the peace did not last. Before the sisters drank more than a few mouthfuls of the kanji, the serene morning was disturbed by a loud bang. Wise Ikin hurriedly rushed out of the house and caught sight of Xijiao leading two strong men through the door after kicking it open. Sister-in-law Ye Aozongbun stood up from the table with embarrassment on his face as he looked at the two strong men behind Xijiao, hesitating to speak. However, Second uncle Kie Aozongxing slapped the table loudly and angrily asked, Xijiao, what are you doing? You enter your eldest brother's house in broad daylight, and this breaking and entering without invitation is your attitude? Eldest brother, second brother, I'm really sorry, but well, it's not like I wanted to come myself, but elderly lady Kie Ao charged me with the responsibility of escorting Kie Ao mute along gate in to apologize to Miss Liu and make amends. Xijiao pursed her brilliantly red lips and glanced at the two strong men from the corner of her eyes. What are you waiting for? Act. Xijiao, you are purposefully visiting and provoking us. Second uncle Kie Aozongxing shot up instantly. Watching how one of the strong men walked up to snatch Kie Ao Mu, Kie Aozongxing did not speak further and swung a fist at the strong man's face. The strong man clutched his face in pain and took a step back. Wise Ikin charged forward with a pale face and pulled Kie Ao Mu into her arms. Chapter 24, Sending a Present, Buffoons Making Fools of Themselves. Kie Ao Mu nonchalantly glanced at Xijiao, but Wise Ikin acted as though she was facing a terrible enemy and hastily pushed her daughter behind her. Xijiao, don't go too far. Kie Aozongxing angrily rebuked with a taut face. Second brother, I'm not pleased by what you are implying. I came here to conduct business on the order of elderly lady Kie Ao. Xijiao impatiently pursed her lips into a straight line. If I don't do a good job, and elderly lady Kie Ao blames me for it later, will you take responsibility, second brother? Or will eldest brother and eldest sister-in-law do it? Wise Ikin was about to speak when a soft little hand pressed on the back of her own hand. Kie Ao Mu walked out from behind her mother's back and stood in front of Xijiao, indifferently saying, 
wait for me. The adults all looked at each other blankly. Kiyamu's tiny figure made a loop inside the woodshed before quickly reappearing in front of Xijiao. We can go now. Xijiao was stunned. Why Zaikin also hurriedly walked up, wanting to drag her own daughter back. Kiyo Kiyao, you can't leave with them. They are forcing you to go and apologize to Miss Liu. How could she allow her daughter to endanger herself again? Why must her daughter, who is so young, withstand such enormous pressure. There were so many people from the heavenly Tao sect gathered at Long Gate Inn, whereas her daughter was young and had only herself, so how could this do? Don't worry, Mum Kiyamu nodded at Wise Ikin before turning to face Kiyao Zongxing. Second uncle, I will be right back. And then, she sent a kick to the back of the left strong man's calf before folding her hands behind her back. She coldly stated, her chin slightly raised. What are you blanking out for? Lead the way. Kiao Zongxing instantly grew amused. This little niece of his might look like a tiny round ball but when she put up an arrogant front, it looked quite legit. The kicked man was also shocked inside. The little girl's kick might look light as a feather, but it sent a tingling pain radiating in his calf. When he had the opportunity to sneakily peek at it and discovered that his whole calf had turned purple. The shock in him grew bigger. Xijiao followed them out the door and lightly coughed, glancing at Kiao Mu uncomfortably. What did you do in the woodshed just now? Kiao Mu nonchalantly looked at her. When I visit someone's house, I naturally can't go empty handed and make your precious Kiao clan look bad. Xijiao was amazed. So you are saying that you even prepared a present? Kiao Mu disregarded her. Xijiao reckoned this child's inclination to talk did not exceed three sentences. If people inquired further, she was typically unwilling to answer. The entire Kieta village had only one inn located at the entrance of the village. It was not that luxurious but quite a lot of people lodged there. Xijiao had the two strong men stay outside Long Gate Inn and led Kiao Mu inside herself. After asking for the room of Ms. Liu from the Heavenly Dao sect, she brought Kiao Mu to elegant room on the second floor. There was no one in front of Liu Yexin's room, so the other disciples of the Heavenly Dao sect were probably resting inside their own room. Xijiao pushed Kiao Mu forward. After you enter, properly apologize to Miss Liu and repent for your earlier insolence. You must butter Miss Liu up, or else you will get it when you go back. Kiao Mu coldly glanced at her. For some reason, Xijiao felt like this child's eyes were so pitch black that they were terrifying. Her distinctively black and white eyes did not contain a tinge of warmth, as though it was covered by a millennium old layer of snow. How did it resemble a child's eyes? After Kiao Mu entered the room, she closed the door behind her and faintly smiled at Liu Yexin, who had sat up. When Liu Yexin saw the hoodoo, she could not resist exclaiming in panic. Why did you come here? Chapter 25, Extremely Unruly Kiao Mu's hand loosened, and a moderately sized brick slid from her sleeve into her hand. Then, without a single word, Kiao Mu shot up with the brick in her hand and ruthlessly bashed it against Liu Yexin's head. When Liu Yexin's swine-like screech emanated from the room, a feeling of unease flooded Xijiao's heart. She was about to push the door to enter when the room's door was pulled open from the inside. Kiao Mu withdrew the brick back inside of her sleeve and calmly walked past Xijiao. Question mark however. When Xijiao turned to look inside with a face of confusion, terror instantly flooded her face. Inside the room, was the girl who drifted down from the bed with disheveled hair and a head covered in blood Ms. Liu from the heavenly Dao sect. My goodness, what sin have they committed? Xijiao turned enraged in a split second and subconsciously turned around, grabbing the departing Kiao Mu. What did you do? Kiao Mu. Look at what you have done. Kiao Mu's hand lightly trembled and instantly shook off Xijiao's hand. Seeing how she ambled down the stairs irresponsibly without looking back, Xijiao was rooted to where she stood, dumbfounded. She had seen unruly children, but she had never seen a child more unruly and bizarre than her. Say, if you were unhappy about coming to apologize, then speak it clearly. Yet, she came here compliantly and then turned everything on its head after coming. How could this be tolerated? Xijiao had thought this was extremely unruly behavior already, but the sight that she was met with when the extraordinarily unfortunate Miss Liu looked up nearly caused her to faint from anger. A piece of white paper was pasted onto Miss Liu's face, 
and rows of flowing cursive were written on it. I came to give a present on the order of grandmother, no need for thanks. If you have a return gift, please prepare your own brick, and find elderly lady Kiao to personally receive it at the Kiao compound at No. 6 Kieta village. Xijiao was truly enraged to laughter. Could it be that the girl beat someone up here and then also wished for Miss Liu to bring people to seek elderly lady Kiao out to return the favor? When senior brother Jin the other people of the heavenly Dao sect rushed out after hearing the noise. Kiao Mu had already departed from Longgate Inn and disappeared without a trace. Even if Xijiao had 10,000 guts, she did not dare to stay and endure rage of the heavenly Dao sect on her own. Her organs might throb from anger, but she hastily returned home to inform elderly lady Kiao about the event. After exiting the inn, Kiao Mu did not take more than two steps before she suddenly looked up and saw someone jumping from the railings of the second floor of the tea house across the street. In a flutter of clothes, that person landed in front of her. Kiao Mu did not bother looking up and voluntarily moved to the side, planning to walk around the blockage. Unexpectedly, that person chuckled and took a side step, standing in front of her. Little Kiao Kiao, why are you trying to slip away as soon as you see me? Did you do something bad again? Not far away, the two accompanying youths in short lapel black clothes could not help face palming. They felt like their highness the crown prince was becoming more and more unscrupulous. His highness, who was outwardly refined and gentle like a spring breeze yet inwardly conniving, nefarious, and temperamental was currently treading down a bottomless path. Kiao Mu looked up and glared at a certain someone. What's hiding inside your sleeve? That certain someone completely disregarded this wooden doll's absolutely harmless gaze. Instead, he pushed his luck, took a step forward, and picked the child up in his arms, extracting the brick hidden in her sleeves. Why are you holding on to this filthy thing? A certain crown prince hid a face of disgust as he tossed the bloody brick onto the ground before using a clean handkerchief to wipe Kiao Mu's hands. Kiao Mu felt that if she had a brick in her hand right now, she would certainly strike it against his head without hesitation. There is truly a screw loose in your head, am I familiar with you? Chapter 26, Inky. How are we unfamiliar? Look, this is already our third chance encounter Moli and blinked and his hands motions paused. He suddenly realized that in the three times they had met, he coincidentally just happened to witness this child committing a crime every single time. This is probably preordained destiny, right? Molian remarked with a chuckle. With a swish of his fingers, a black five finger width and seven inches long object that resembled a ferule appeared in his hand. From now on, use this to hit someone. It's nimble and easy to use. Molian placed the ferule into the child's hand before distastefully glancing at the brick on the floor. Don't keep something that filthy. It would fall apart with a few slams, it's so impractical. This is better and very sturdy. So slam it however you wish. It won't break. The two accompanying youths in black nearly fell onto the ground. Such a young sprout and yet his highness was raising her so crookedly in such a disaster courting fashion. Is this truly all right, your highness? The black ferule appeared very icy, but it was warm to the touch and did not have a single hint of bone chilling coolness. After holding it in her hand for a while, she could even feel traces of warmth. Although this crown prince was a bit cuckoo, the things that he brought out were truly fine, like the medicine from earlier and this ferule. If she guessed correctly, this ferule was not only a mystic weapon but also a very high level mystic weapon. At least, with her current status as a level 3 mystic cultivator, she could not assess the level of this mystic weapon. Mystic weapon masters have long faded into the history of Saikong planet. In the last hundred years, not a single mystic weapon master had appeared on Saikong planet. There hadn't even been a level 1 mystic weapon master. Many people claimed it was because the climate of Saikong planet was not good, so it could not birth a mystic weapon master, while other people claimed it was due to the lack of forging materials. Anyhow, this so and so crown prince in front of her might not look too reliable, but the things that he brought out were absolutely appealing. Kiao Mu's face remained tense. And she did not say anything, but she silently stuffed the ferule into her sleeve. Looking at this twisted child, Molian nearly laughed out loud. Do you know how to use it? While holding a certain child, 
Molian cheerfully walked forward and quietly explained how to use a mystic weapon. This is a level 12 mystic weapon. Originally, you shouldn't be able to use it with your current mystic energy, but I have sealed a portion of its power and temporarily suppressed it into a level 3 mystic weapon. As your strength grows, it will also grow with you. Infuse mystic energy inside when you use it, and you will slowly discover its unexpected function. You should name it Inky One! Exclamation mark! Are you sure you aren't half-heartedly naming some mediocre mystic weapon? Kiao Mu was silent for three seconds before tacking on an explanation. It looks black. Molian, immediately after, the black ferule in the child's sleeve emitted a faint black light. Molian glanced down at it a faint trace of emotion sliding through his eyes. This child was truly intelligent, silently embedding her mystic energy into the mystic weapon and easily gaining the recognition of the mystic weapon. What would you call it if it looked white? Whitey. Yellow. Yellowy. All right. The name Inky was quite decent already. At least it wasn't blacky or something. The corner of Molian's mouth twitched as he glanced at the little squirt, not knowing whether to laugh or cry. By pointlessly chatting, it allowed this little wooden doll to temporarily forget that she was currently in a certain someone's arms and that she was being carried the whole time. In truth, how could Kiao Mu forget? She simply had not recovered from her shock. A level 12 mystic weapon. This so and so crown prince managed to bring out a level 12 mystic weapon so easily, but she had not even seen a level 12 mystic weapon once while she was alive in her past life. Okay? Chapter 27 A lot of distaste When a person used his own mystic energy as a spark, it might not always make a mystic weapon obediently recognize the person as its owner, especially since this is a level 12 mystic weapon that outranked Kiao Mu's actual level by several levels. This mystic weapon was nearly a spiritual weapon. Molian originally thought that he would later need to assist this little girl in making this mystic weapon recognize her as its owner who knew that she would accomplish it on her own so swiftly. This stoic little wooden block truly surprised him at every turn. I will be staying in your village for the next few days and will be staying at that long gate inn. If you have any problems, you can come and find me at any time, Molian said with a grin as he walked forward while carrying the child. The two silently following servants looked at each other and inwardly asked, Bewildered, this person, was he truly their highness the crown prince? Why did it feel like he was swapped? Since when did their lord become so gentle and amiable? And people can even seek him out to solve a problem at any time? Ha! Huh. Kiao Mu's face stayed taut as she solemnly looked at Molian. It was then that she finally realized she had been carried by this person the whole way, and turmoil slipped into her stoic face as she tried her best to maintain an icy expression and kicked him. Kiao Mu gestured for him to put her down with her eyes, but he merely looked at her blankly, causing Kiao Mu to rigorously struggle in anger to get free. However, her small limbs were not all too helpful to the cause. Molian carried her the whole way home before gently patting her head and asking, Xia Gia, do you need me to explain to your parents what happened at Long Gate in today? Bang! Kiao Mu directly slammed the gate shut in a certain someone's face. Molian blinked before turning around to look at the two sneaky servants behind him with a perfectly guileless look. Say, is Xia Gia a bit distasteful of me? How was it only a bit? Your Highness, it was obviously a lot of distaste, all right. However, on the surface, the two servants smiled like a brilliantly blooming flower and simultaneously said, How could she? Miss Giao is innocent and angelic as well as lovely and adorable. It's just that she is still young, so she isn't good at socializing with people. Innocent and angelic, ha ha. That never changing icy and stoic face was adorable. How infuriating that they don't even know how to lie. Molian glanced at his insincere subordinates and commented, You two have been outside for quite a while. Tomorrow, you will return to the hidden pavilion and report back. Let's have Hidden Flower thoroughly tighten your frames and teach you how to befriend people while he's at it. His servant's eyes nearly fell out of their sockets. No, we, no, your highness. The one who doesn't know how to befriend people is Miss Gyo Kiao. MMM. Another servant hastily rushed up to cover this loud mouth and turned to look at the frosty-faced crown prince with an embarrassed smile. Your Highness, don't worry, 
we will immediately return to the hidden pavilion and participate in the training. We will most certainly learn how to befriend people well. What a joke. Didn't he see that their lord showed signs of turning hostile on them? Unlike the loud-mouthed personal bodyguard, this guard was an insightful person and clearly understood their lord's meaning in a split second. They merely mentioned that Miss Kiyokia was unaware of how to socialize and instantly had to suffer from a certain lord's painful retaliation. They felt like their life was incredibly bitter and harsh. As soon as Kiyao Mu closed the gate and blocked Molian outside, she ran off to locate her second uncle, Kiao Zongxing. Seeing her return unharmed, wise Ikin's heart finally settled, and she joyfully trotted off to the kitchen to do her chores. Meanwhile, Kiao Mu did not take more than a few steps before seeing Kiao Zongxing walking out of the house with her father. Second uncle, I have to speak with you. Chapter 28 Foodie? Kiyoki Aokiao Zongbin was about to ask his daughter about the situation at Long Gate Inn. But to his surprise, his daughter did not look at him at all and turned around and ran off with her uncle. All right, all right, Kiao Kiao, slow down as Kiao Zongxing was pushed down to the stone stool on the side, he looked at his niece's solemn and taut face with amusement. Second uncle, can you help me buy a large quantity of supplies? Regrettably, her arms and legs were frankly too tiny so some seemingly simple things were difficult to do at her current age. Kiao Zongxing was startled. Kiao Kiao, you want to buy things? You want to buy. Kiao Mu extended her hand and placed the chest with 300 dls of gold and the two pouches with 100 dls of gold in front of Kiao Zongxing. Second uncle, here is 400 dls of gold. I need you to help me bulk buy all sorts of food. The livestock would preferably be alive and I want all types of grains and fruits. Also, help me find Uncle Blacksmith to forge three durable but comfortable carriages. Additionally, help me order one batch of pig iron arrows, ten bows, and fifty swords. That's all for now. Here is the blueprint for the carriages. Oh, second uncle, please help me purchase six swift horses too. As for the arrows, I need at least five hundred, no, how about 800? If Uncle Blacksmith can't forge it in time, then help me order it from the blacksmiths in nearby villages and towns. Kiao Zongxing watched the child, stupefied, and subconsciously laid his hand over her forehead. It was neither burning nor feverish. So why was this child full of nonsense? Second uncle, I'm wide alert and also know what I'm talking about. Kiao Mu pulled down Kiao Zongxing's hand and firmly watched Kiao Zongxing as she asked. Second uncle, with your estimation, how long can the six of us, my family, you, and brother Xiao Hu, survive off of the grains and meat that you buy with what remains of the four hundred dls of gold after taking out the cost of the weapons and the three carriages? Kiao Zongxing paused for a moment before incredulously saying, Kiao Kiao, you are forging not only carriages but also arrows and swords. Just what are you planning to do? Could it be you want to revolt? You want to overthrow the Mo clan's regime? Kiao Zongxing found his foolish thoughts ridiculous. However, Kiao Mu ignored his questions and merely pressed, Second uncle, can this food supply last three months? Three months is naturally more than enough. His mind turned upside down as Kiao Zongxing followed the child's topic. However, the 800 arrows and the other blades and bows that you mentioned, they can't be finished within a few days. 10 days. Second uncle, I want to obtain everything in a max of 10 days. How about second uncle temporarily pause his bun shop these next few days? Bring brother Xiaohu over to my house. I will have to trouble second uncle to run around these next few days. It's no trouble as soon as he said it. Kiao Zongxing was stunned. Why did he ineffably go along with the child's rhythm and agree to it? However, Kiao Kiao, can you answer second uncle? Why do you need all these things? Also, disregarding the carriages and the horses, and also the swords and weapons, the remaining gold would be enough to buy out all the grains in two or three of the nearby villages. Needing so much grain and food, have you discussed this with your parents yet? You little squirt. Since when did this child become a foodie? Kiao Mu shoved the 400 dls of gold into Kiao Zongxing's hand. Second uncle, then you should depart this afternoon. After you purchase everything and return, 
I will tell you the reason. This child Kiao Zongxing's face was full of resignation. Kiao Kiao, if we buy so many things, we won't have room anywhere to even buy it up at that time. Second uncle, have you forgotten? Us mystic cultivators have our own inner world. So don't worry and buy it all. We will definitely have room to store it. Chapter 29, Persuasion. That's right. Kiao Zongxing slapped his thigh. At the mention of mystic cultivator, his hands gesticulated in joy. All right, Kiao Kiao, then let's not wait until afternoon. Second uncle will go and do this now. There Xiao Kiao was the first seven-year-old mystic cultivator to emerge from the Kiao clan in the last several hundred years. Every mystic cultivator had their own inner world for storage. However, there were not many people who possessed such an elite thing in the entire Saikong planet. And so, Kiao Zongxing was duped by Kiao Mu in this fashion and happily carried the 400 tons of gold as he went out to procure the items. What he had long forgotten though was that the inner world of a mystic cultivator was typically only 3 or 5 cubic meters big, so how could it fit so many items? Kiao Mu lightly sighed in relief. Interesting this matter to second uncle was the most reliable since second uncle was very serious and honest in whatever he did. If she said she needed 800 arrows, then he would not give her 799. There were merely 14 days before the zombie outbreak. As long as she finished preparing all the supplies within 10 days. Then she would have sufficient time to bring her mother and sister to the nearby Xijiu city to temporarily settle there. In contrast to a completely vulnerable village like Kieta village that was prone to the first wave of attack, Xijiu city was number one in both the strength of the city's defense and the stock of supplies in their vicinity. Most importantly, however, Xijiu city was not too far from Kieta village and it only took two days to get there. After entrusting second uncle with the tasks, Kiao Mu felt her heart steady. She decided she would make a trip to Madame Wu's house and have a good talk with her about life. So tired. I feel like I used up a year's worth of words with second uncle. Kiao Mu lazily sagged onto the recliner in the courtyard with one hand supporting her chin and her mind wandering off into the distance. This was the sight that greeted Kiao Zongban when he entered. Kiao Kiao time to eat. Kiao Zongban took two steps forward and was about to extend his arms to pick up his daughter when the child sprung up from the recliner and darted toward the dining table without looking back. Kiao Zongban could not help but turn astonished. Only now did he belatedly realize that at some point in time, the little girl had stopped liking him. Her behavior could not be any more obvious, she was very indifferent toward him and even ignored him. Often, if Wai Zikin was not present, she would not even bother to speak to him. Kiao Zongban cheerlessly drifted to the table and sat down, and the family of four silently ate. Now and then, Wai Zikin would pick up some food and give it to Kiao Mu and Kiao Lin, and the three of them ate amiably in their own world, as though they have completely rejected their family head, him. Um, Zikin Kiao Zongban could hear the hoarseness in his voice. Wu Yanzin said that she has contacted that family already. And soon, we can bring Xiao Linna. Mother, I heard that Erda's younger sister was sold to a family by their parents. Recently, brother Erda sneaked to the town to see his sister. He found his sister not only being beaten and scolded but also ordered about and worked to death like an ox all day long by that family's eldest miss. Erda's sister has endless chores every day, and her whole body is covered in scars and injuries without a spot on a mud. Wise Ikin's pupils visibly contracted. She suddenly tossed away the chopsticks in her hand before dragging Kiao Mu and Kiao Lin up and turning around to leave. Zikin. Kiao Zongban shot up. Wise Ikin looked back and shouted at him, infuriated. I can raise my daughter myself. I don't need that mother of yours to stick her nose into other people's business. Don't think that I don't know Wu Yanzhen isn't anyone good. She and that wonderful sister-in-law of yours, Xijiao, are birds of a feather. They want to earn a commission from my daughter. Dream on, Chapter 30, A Night of Arson, Plunder, and Murder. Yao Zongbin was immensely dismayed. The endless arguments between him and his wife over the past two days had sucked all the energy out of his body and mind. Added to his daughter's increasing distance from him, he could not help but reflect deep inside his mind. Had he truly done something wrong? The mother and daughter's trio did not care what Kiao Zongbin fiddled with outside and after cleaning up, 
they proceeded to go to sleep. However, when it was the still of the night, Kiyamu's pitch black eyes quietly opened. She looked to the side and saw her mother and sister deeply asleep. She lightly lifted up a corner of the covers, and her nimble body flashed out the window. The shadows of the trees wavered under the moon, but the window remained completely still. A faint streak of moonlight scattered onto the embracing mother and daughter's sleeping figures. Wu Yanzhen's house was located on the east side of the village and it was surrounded by a brick wall as tall as an adult and had several towering trees planted inside. Kiyamu's ghost-like figure silently stood at the base of the wall. She slightly narrowed her eyes, mustered up the energy needed, and shot up, easily leaping up and securely landing on the wall. Wu Yanzhen's main court was four or five times the size of their house. A few stone tables and chairs were placed on the empty ground and sunflowers were abundantly planted on the two sides of the path. Kiyamu gently flitted to the ground before directly heading for the rear court. Today, she did not come with the sole purpose of causing trouble for Madam Wu. She also wanted to borrow a large sum of funds from her, and she was visiting her while she was at it. She remembered that after the zombie outbreak in her previous life, Madam Wu dug out a plot of gold and peddled around everywhere to exchange it for food. Unfortunately, at that time, 10 liters of rice was already worth 10 million gold. If a family possessed any spare grain, they would guard it tighter than jewelry and gold. Kiyamu lightly sighed. In other words, no matter how much gold and silver you had after the apocalypse, it was all useless if you couldn't find anything to buy. When she remembered the mountains of gold and jewelry in her inner world, depression rose on her face. If she could not withdraw it soon, it would be of no use later on. Forget it, what must be must be, and she could not avoid it even if it was misfortunate. Gold and silver and gems might be useless in the apocalypse, but looking at such exquisite and gorgeous objects still warmed her heart and delighted her eyes. Kiyamu's agile figure leapt into Madame Wu's rear court and looped around the courtyard. She walked about forty steps south from the wall before taking a few steps back and finally standing still. She drew a rectangle around the place she stood, and an icy smile surfaced on her face. Not even in her wildest imagination would Madame Wu realize that the gold buried in her house's rear court would disappear overnight without a trace. An entire nine hundredths of gold. This speed of wealth accumulation was considered quite shocking for a village woman. Kiyam Yu stuffed the nine hundredths of gold into her sack and flung it over her shoulders, carrying the large and heavy sack. Her tiny figure suddenly jumped onto the wall. She looked back, a light arc turning up on her lips. Several minutes later, Wu Yanzhen and her husband were choked awake by the fire outside their door. They fearfully hopped down the bed and swung the door open. They were shocked out of their mind by the sight of the raging fire that greeted them. Gyeo Kiao. When the child jumped out of Wu Yanzhen's house while carrying the large sack, she saw a white clothed, ink-haired youth with a smile in his eyes standing under an ancient tree nearby. He waved at her in greeting. Kiyamu nearly slipped and fell onto the ground. Inwardly, she cursed, what a best. Then, she walked past the youth, her eyes focused in front of her without a tint of red on her face or a skip of beat in her heart. Yuxi truly turned speechless, if he and his highness the crown prince had not personally witnessed this little guy committing murder, arson, and burglary. Perhaps he would have really believed that this child was merely going on a field trip with a sack over her shoulder. Was it really fine for a child this young to be this black-bellied and remain this indifferent after committing murder and arson?